All right, Sara, the under booba simp. She's got a wing that makes you want to swing, but she's got a thing and only clings for the one and only king. Fucking nailed it. So after fiddling around with Sara for a bit, she is pretty fun to play and definitely a great attack buffer. Highly recommend summoning for her, so let's get on with her abilities. Elemental skill, Flying Raijin. Sara teleports backwards, telling these guys to suck it, and her charge shot will now shoot out a bomb. This bomb will explode in a small AoE, which makes some go through Voltaic Torture, while some go through a high that makes their senses tingle. This means it buffs their attack based on Sara's base attack. Makes Sense, right? You do good when you feel good. Quick tip, Sara's saddest shot will be active for 18 seconds even after switching out. Also, Sara is only able to buff the active character on the field and the buff stays even if that character is switched out. Elemental Burst, Titan Breaker. Kept the name for this one because it's already cooler than what I was going to go with. Sara thunderclaps the enemies with AoE electro damage and then the thunderclap spreads out into four different directions and the spread thunderclaps four consecutive times. Also, this thing has a ridiculously high percentage. Quick tip, Sara's Titan Breaker also provides the exact same buff as her bomb, so you can still buff your characters when your flying Raijin is on cooldown. For Sara's passive talents, passive 1, Sara's charge shot time is decreased by 60% when you have your E activated. Passive 2, her bomb restores more energy for her team. Passive 3, she likes her country, so she likes expedition. Alright, story time. Sara who has grown up amongst the humans still visits the mountains when she has free time. There was a theft that was reported to the police one day, and as their NPC brain power limits them to do things, Sara took the report and went ahead to catch the culprit, a Baki Tanuki. Of course, these guys aren't evil by nature. They may waste your time by making you follow them for a minute just to give you a trash artifact, but they're not evil. They were just hungry. They're not assholes. But Sara wasn't having that. She pulled up to the Baki Tanuki and speeked into his ears. If you steal food again, I'm gonna f***ing cut your d**k and shove it up your asshole. It may have been a little less aggressive than that, but it worked. The creature was scared to shit and never did that again. From that day on, every now and then, Sara would bring melons and fruits to the mountain and leave them in front of the Baki Danuki's home. She's kind of nice. Moving on to constellations. I won't lie to you, Sara is one of those characters that gets way better and better the more constellations you have, so let's get through them. Constellation 1. Whenever your bomb hits something, ally or not, the cooldown for your E will be reduced by 1 second. But you can't spam it because of the 3 second cooldown. Constellation 2. After casting this ability, Sara's flying Raijin will leave another small shock bomb, which basically does the same thing as before with less explosion damage. Constellation 3, your Titan Breaker becomes a God Breaker. Constellation 4, your Titan Breaker will now spread into six different directions. Constellation 5, the Tingle becomes a wet dream. Constellation 6, which I think proves how much of a simp Sara is, increases crit damage by 60% for Electro teammates who were buffed by Sara. Wow. I wonder who that's for. Moving on to artifacts. So the first thing I want to mention, and please remember this is very important, Sara's buff is not affected by your artifacts. It is based on her base attack, which can only be changed by your weapon base attack and your Sara's own level. So don't expect your attack percentage to do anything for your buff. But moving on, I'm sure most of you might be wondering if you just give her your Bennett's artifacts for a piece of noblesse, because that 20% attack boost can come in real handy. I recommend grabbing energy recharge stands in order to proc this as often as possible. But if you're not expecting to invest in Sara's energy recharge, then remember this set won't really do much for you since Sara doesn't need to use her burst for the buff. Because I know some of you may already have a battery, they might be blonde, or they might look like they're pulling a sword out of their booba, or maybe you're just going to use a 4-piece Noblesse Bennett and want a different artifact set because the 4-piece Noblesse doesn't stack. If you just want to take full advantage of Sara's burst, since she does have a pretty ridiculous percentage on her burst, and since her buff isn't really affected by her artifacts, here's what I know. I tried the 4-piece Emblem set with similar yet lower stats on Sara. I definitely did more damage than the Bennett piece set. That one was pretty obvious. Then I had the bright idea of 
using the two-piece Thunder Fury and the Noblesse Oblige, and it did a similar amount of damage as the four-piece Emblem set with a 300 higher base attack and 12% less crit damage. And by the way, my artifacts are really just garbage for the four-piece Emblem set. So I would recommend that more than others since you can spam and do big burst damage. But if you're planning on Charge Shots and Titan Breaker, then I would recommend the two-piece Thunder Fury and the two-piece Noblesse. If you're using Elemental Reaction Teams, then the four-piece Thunder Fury will definitely work since all you gotta do is buff your team as often as possible and the four piece set definitely helps you reduce your cooldowns. Now the primary stats you want to go for is attack percentage or energy recharge for sands, electro damage bonus for goblets and then crit rate or crit damage for your circlet. For substats, crit rate and crit damage substats are important for consistent damage but definitely go for ER after that. Story time too. So Sara is a Tengu which is a supernatural being in Japanese folklore so she isn't human. Thankfully Mihoyo's character design team didn't make Sara look like she was extremely drunk. So as a nameless child, she was definitely stronger than most humans, yet not strong enough to deal with these monsters who decided to throw a little girl off a cliff. So it was definitely more rough than the time my parents held up their room. Sara fell but survived thanks to her natural buoyancy. Some people found her and brought her to the Tenryo Commission, which leads to her stepdad, Kujo Takayuki, and he noticed that she had a vision in her hand at a young age. So Takayuki was like, oh sh**. I just hit a jackpot that most parents don't get. Let me invest my life into her so I can rise higher even though I was born to look exactly like I'm related to every other NPCs. So he names her Sara Kujo because a fortune teller tells him that the name Jolene will lead her to a cell. And Sara would later believe that she survived that brutal fall thanks to the Booba Sword Archon. So from that point on, her entire existence was meant to become the number one simp of the Booba Shogun. Moving on to weapons, also again, only base attack affects the buff. The primary attack percentage does fucking nothing. Starting with 5 stars, the Amos Bow is definitely for charge shot builds. And based on Sara's normal attack speed, I think charge shots will work. It also has a lower base attack stat than any other 5 star weapons, but it also has a higher base attack stat than any other 4 star weapons. So if you just want to use her for the tingles, then I would recommend this for sure. Scoured Harp, this is my favorite weapon for Sara, mainly because it has everything. A higher base attack than the Amos Bow, it also gives you crit rate and crit damage is just an overall great weapon for stats. Thundering Pulse. This bow's abilities are more focused on auto attacks, which Sara isn't the best stat, but the overall stats for this bow provides the highest base attack out of any bows, which means the tingles are going to turn into a wet dream of tingles, and the high crit damage is going to wake you up from the wet dream of tingles and tingle you for real. So I guess you can use this, but if you have this weapon, I'm assuming you've probably already given this to its respective owners. Elegy Bow. I doubt you pull for this, but it works great with Sara in terms of the 5 star base base attack stat with ER for ability spam, but I don't have it, so I don't know what to tell you about the Voltaic Bomb damage or the Titan Breaker, but I'm sure you most likely didn't pull for this, even the Venti mains didn't pull for this because no one saw the Elemental Mastery update coming. Moving on to 4 stars, Stringless, high base attack, great ability damage, but only use it for reaction teams. Sacrificial, high base attack, useful ability, but also unnecessary, even more so when you have C1 and C2 Zara. Favonius, low base attack with high ER with the ability to help the king, but the low base attack is a bit of a turnoff. Credit card, high base attack, high crit rate with amazing CC for Sara's abilities, but you unfortunately must swipe for this. Blackcliff, high base attack with some crit damage and so-so ability. I recommend this for sub DPS Sara, but you unfortunately must have some star glitter. Kakashi's secret stash bow, low base attack with meh ability. Honestly, looks amazing on Unda Booba Beauty, but it's kind of like the Chungus and Snow Tombed case. Now for teams, Kujo Sara, the biggest simp for the king, has the most amazing kit for the king. I wonder who I should use her with. Hmm. Must be Beidou. She's the real king when it comes to her chat fanbase. Jokes aside though, Sara really works great with any electro units in the game, mainly because she provides buffs and resonance that doesn't make Bennett into a necessity when it comes to building teams, which is really nice. Now, Bennett can share the mantle of the attack buff role. If you also have C6 Sara, her compatibility with electro units becomes even better, so I would highly recommend electro resonance with Sara since her cost is pretty high as well. Characters to avoid, I would point out every light blue themed character except for the Thigh Queen, Superconduct is absolutely useless for elemental damage team comps and I don't recommend it at all. It's like going to a beach with your $1 vanilla ice cream in the middle of a snowstorm. Don't do it! But aside from that, she works pretty well with every other characters, even Bennett, stacking with his attack buff, increasing your team's damage even further to the absolute tingle. So how the f*** 
fuck do you play Sara? Well, just move backwards, shoot, switch, spam everyone's abilities, and then come back to Sara and do the whole thing again with your Titan Breaker or your Flying Raijin. But some tips, I guess. Number one, you can actually dodge these cucks if you time your Flying Raijin right. So I guess do that if you want. Number two, Sara's buff doesn't stack. So if you have C2, just buff another character. Number three, in case you forgot about this, your Titan Breaker buffs too. So you can just buff Sara, Titan Breaker, and then switch into someone else and buff them and then do big damage. But that is it for this video, guys. If you guys did enjoy, hit that thumbs up and subscribe and comment down about your thoughts on Sara. I'm going to go and farm for a ball and make a video on her. Hopefully you guys have an amazing day. Bye-bye, guys.